tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. If you're new here, I'm Jolene. Welcome. Today I'm going to show you this easy DIY how you can create these fancy fans for your dolls. So I started with scrap poster board. This was a piece of poster board that I purchased from my local dollar store, but you can find them in your art stores or local stores or even online. Fairly cheap. Uh, you can also use chipboard for this uh, right out of your pantry. So any of your cracker, cereal boxes, pasta boxes, or you can use cardstock. I would recommend using a chipboard or poster board over cardstock. But you can use cardboard as well if you have a super thin layer of cardboard. So the first thing you want to do is make yourself a template and it's going to be a half circle shape and you want to save this template so that you can make future fans. I'm just using a bottle of paint to create a half circle shape. Uh, this just happened to be the same size I needed. So find yourself something that you can use that has a circular shape and just trace half of it. So I'm just putting it on the edge so that I can have a straight cut and not have to cut that myself. This measures about an inch and a half in length and probably about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. You can make them uh, bigger or smaller. You can make several different sizes of these. This one's a little too big, so I'm just gonna trim it down. But I'm also gonna make another template because I'm gonna show you how you can make a few different styles of fans using this template. And I'm also gonna show you how to create a different style of fan without this template. These fans that I'm gonna show you were created with this same template. And this is one of those projects that you can definitely get carried away and it's quite addicting. You can make several in a batch kind of like the little hats. Uh, you can decorate them any way that you can imagine and just the possibilities are endless for these little fans. So have fun with it, get carried away with it and use what you have to create unique styles. This next fan was created with two templates. So I'm gonna show you how to create the other template. And I still used the half circle for the back and then the fan pieces were made with a little triangle shape template that looks like a pizza slice. So I'm going to show you how to create these fans as well but you will need both templates for those and I did a few different ones of those as well. So this project is part of a gift exchange for one of my tiny friends that you will see coming up uh, shortly. <laughs> and uh, this was quite a fun project to create for her. Now the pizza slice shape, the little triangle here is about three quarters of an inch long and the width fits right inside the half inch mark. So it's almost a half of an inch at the widest point. It just slides right in between the half inch mark. So that's the idea that you wanna go with. You're gonna need nine pieces of this. Now you can use eight and you can create smaller fans uh, using smaller shapes and or less uh, pieces. But I'm just gonna trace out nine pieces for the average size and I'm gonna try to put as many pieces as I can on one whole piece. And you can try and do this if you have enough room or you can put as many as you can on as many pieces as you need to create nine slices. Once you have your piece or pieces, you're gonna wanna pick out either a piece of fabric or scrapbook paper or craft paper of your choice. Either one is gonna work for this. Just get yourself a pretty pattern or color that you like. You can see the half circle template in the back. Do not worry if that template is crooked and is not straight. You don't have to worry about that at all because your triangle pieces will be straight in the front and we're gonna cover that back up later on anyways. 
So now I'm just using tacky glue and I'm putting down a nice, even thin layer. I'm making sure that I'm covering all my pieces and that my layer is nice and smooth. There's no lumps and bumps, especially if you're gonna use paper. You wanna make sure you have a nice, thin, even layer. And then you just glue it down to either your paper or fabric. Make sure that your fabric or paper is facing down and you're gluing on the back side, the side that you don't want to be seen. You also wanna make sure that when you apply your glue to your template, that you're applying it to the back side of the side that you traced on. So the side that you traced on, you want to be facing up because you need to see those to use those as your cutting guide. So be careful not to glue that side down because you need to see that side. And then just begin cutting out your pieces. I chose fabric for this fan. I have all my pieces cut out and now I'm gonna to begin to lay them down. Now you wanna put your first slice, you just wanna glue the top half of your first slice down. It's gonna be four slices on one side, your fifth slice in the middle, and then four slices on the other side. So I'm just adding a little bit of tacky glue to the top half of my slice and applying it right to the template. The bottom half is hanging down and it kind of goes at an angle. My slice is straight, but the way that the triangle is, it creates an angle. I'm also making sure that I'm putting my pointy end right on the mid section so it actually falls right in the middle of that half circle. And then I'm gonna repeat the process. So I'm only doing about half of the next piece onto the top half, and then I'm going on to the next one. So you can see about half of each piece being shown. And I'm just kind of layering them that way. So you're only covering up the top half as you're going around. So you got your four pieces on one side, your fifth piece should be straight up and down in the middle. And you wanna make sure that you're lining your edges up evenly with each other as you're curving it around your template. So you're gonna be flipping it back and forth to make sure that your pieces are lined up. And it should look like this when you are done. And then just press it down nice and tight. Make sure all your pieces are pressed down, especially in the middle where all the points meet. Now they don't all have to lay on top of each other, but you want them to all kind of, you know, uh, meet up in that middle point right there on the bottom. So you can see when I flip this around, my half circle template isn't really all that straight in the back. And I believe I have another one that's even more crooked. Again, don't worry about that. That's gonna be covered up. Uh, as long as your front pieces are nice and lined up, the back is not gonna matter. It's just to hold your pieces together. If you need to trim any excess off, trim off any excess hanging over. Make sure you're pressing it down so all your pieces are nice and flat. And now you can decorate your fan any way you would like. So this one I used a piece of lace trimming. You can use lace trimming, uh, you can use embroidery trimming, you can use paper trimming. I've used all of that on the different fans. So this one is a embroidery trimming. Um, I've used paper trimming. I've used paper flowers. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. This one is a paper flower trimming. It has glitter around the end. And then I added a little bit of lace. And then for the handle, I added a bead cone, kind of like a bead spacer cone, a little metal cone that I've cut and opened up. I'll show you how to do that as well. For this metal, uh, embellishment, it's a nail decal. So you can use several different things to embellish your fans as well. I've used beads, I've used um, gems, uh, little uh, rhinestones. Um, so, I mean, it's just endless and whatever your imagination can come up with. These are little uh, bead caps. You can flatten them down and you can use single pieces and put three 
you, you're not gonna want to use just one. You're gonna wanna kind of fill the space up. So about three will work. So you wanna put one in the middle and one on each side. It'll kind of look like this. And then there'll be one on the other side. Or you could just flatten out the whole piece and use the whole thing as a handle. I'll show you how I used that as well and did that. And I'll show you how I added details with paint. So this is what I mean by you can get carried away. Use what you got and get really creative with this and just use your imagination. For this one, I'm gonna use some feathers. This is a yard of rooster feathers that I've had for so long and have not yet used. And I thought this would be a great time to use these. And I'm gonna use the fuzzy part of the feather. So I'm just gonna pick out a couple of them that are really fuzzy and pull them out and then I'm gonna cut them down. And I'll show you how I'm gonna apply this. And this will be the trimming on the fan. So it'll kind of look something like that because I want this fan to look really fancy. So this is gonna be a higher end fan. So I'm just gonna cut down the fuzzy pieces that I'm gonna use. I'm using two. And I'm gonna use a piece of scrap ribbon. I had a piece of red scrap ribbon and it just ended up to be perfect for this. And I'm just using tacky glue. I'm gonna glue the feather onto the ribbon right along the spine. So I'm placing the ribbon right along the spine of the feather making sure that I have enough room to cut right in between the two. The ribbon will keep all the fuzzy pieces from falling apart and just keep it together in one whole piece. And I'm just gonna continue this process until my whole ribbon is completed with my feathers and I have a little band of fluffy feathers. You can use whatever color ribbon you have because it's gonna get covered up in the end. So it doesn't have to match your fan. But you do wanna use a smaller size ribbon or maybe a piece of string for this if you're going with feathers. And I'm just dry fitting, kind of measuring as I go along just to make sure that I have a long enough band to cover my edges. I'm gonna use my metallic gold by Folk Art and I'm just gonna paint around the edge. And I'm doing this before I add the feathers. So if you wanna do any painting to yours, make sure you do that before you add the trimming. This way you don't accidentally get any paint on your trimming, but you can paint any design that you would like, whether you're using fabric or paper, you wanna get really fancy with these, go for it. So I'm just adding a thin line right around the edge just to give it a little bit of gold. I'm gonna do this twice and then I'm gonna go in once it dries and use a little bit of rub and buff as well just to make that gold pop just a little more. I'm also gonna add a little bit of the gold rub and buff to the metal handles as well. These are kind of a bronze handle but adding the gold rub and buff will just give it a little more dimension and add to the patina of these things. So I'm just using a cotton swab to do this and I'm doing it very lightly. Now I'm gonna add my trimming and I'm just using tacky glue. I'm applying it to the back side where I'm gonna add the ribbon. I cut my ribbon down into two pieces because it just helps to curve around the edges a little better and it's just easier to do in sections. So I'm just gonna take my time to make sure that it lines up right along the edge. Now that my trimming is on, I'm just gonna cut off any excess that I have. And I'm also gonna trim it down just to make it look nice and clean and even. Right now it just looks a little wild and out of control. And I'm also giving it a point cut instead of cutting it straight around. This way it doesn't have a straight edge and it just kind of blends in a little better. So if you're gonna add a handle like this or a metal piece or anything for a handle, you wanna make sure if you wanna add any more to the midsection of the fan, you do that before adding your handle. Cause once you add your handle, you can't put anything underneath it. So if you wanna add lace or if you wanna add any more ribbon to the midsection, that needs to lay under the handle and you kind of have to layer it. 
I'm using my cutting tool to help trim the metal piece down. Although it's a thin metal, it does need a little elbow grease to cut. So I'm using my cutting tool. I believe these are called dykes. And I'm also gonna use my wire cutters to help along the way uh, because these weren't really doing the trick. So you can see me bending it back and forth. These things are really tough. Even though they're very, very thin and easy to cut, they do take a little bit of muscle. So I'm just trimming off uh, what I don't need because the piece is too big. I'm just gonna dry fit it to make sure that it's a good size. And once I'm happy with the size, I'm just gonna use my needle nose pliers just to kind of curve the bottom half of the handle a little more. It already has like a curved shape to it because these were uh, kind of cone shaped. And then I'm gonna take my dykes. I love using these to flatten out my metal and I'm just flattening out the top half just so that I, I can glue it to the fan and it'll attach to the fan a little better. So once I get these to the shape that I like, then I can go ahead and glue them down. I'm using my super glue. This is my Loctite super glue and I'm also using my uh, tacky glue as well. The super glue will attach it right away while the tacky glue will add that extra bond and hold over time. I'll also show you how I covered the backs and what I used for that as well. So this is what I have for now. And I'm gonna move on to the next one. Okay, for this fan, I'm gonna use this same template and I'm gonna create a folded fan. So there's gonna be creases in this one. Now I'm gonna make a mark right in the center of the bottom, splitting it in half. And then I'm gonna go around the top and create three marks on one side, one directly in the middle on the top, and then three marks on the other side. And I'm kind of just eyeballing this to space them out as even as I can. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just gonna connect the points from the middle section on the bottom to the top marks that I created. This will give me eight pizza slice triangles. It will be four on each side. Now they don't have to be exactly even, so don't worry about that. And when you're folding this, don't worry if your folds aren't perfectly even. None of that's gonna matter because we're gonna layer different materials or fabrics or paper on top. So we're just giving the idea of the fold. They don't have to be exact. Once you got your lines, you wanna take your craft knife and just make some scores in your lines. This will help the chipboard or poster board fold a little easier and keep your piece from wrinkling as you're folding it. And then you just wanna fold your first flap back, your second flap forward, your third flap back, and you just wanna go back and forth. So front to back, front to back, or back to front, back to front, whichever way you start. And then once you get it all folded, you kinda just wanna pinch it all closed together, give it a couple nice tight pinches, and then open it back up. And then you should have some nice creases. I like to do this on the back side so that the white side will be facing the back. But again, it's not gonna matter because I'm gonna cover it up in the end anyways. Now I'm gonna use these paper flowers made for scrapbooking. I've had these things for so many years and they've just been in my stash of embellishments. And now I get to finally use them. So I'm gonna take this one apart and I'm just gonna gently peel the leaves the layers of leaves off and just take it apart. And then I can use one of the leaves as the trimming to the back. So each layer has like three or four leaves on them and they're separate pieces that are all attached together. I'm also gonna use this lace. I thought this would be pretty to add to it, the trimming on it. So right now I'm just playing around to figure out how this is gonna look and what I can add to it and how I'm gonna put it together. So I decided to use the trimming part of this lace. So I'm just gonna cut 
the trimming part off. Now I'm still playing around with this to see what else I can do with it because I want some sort of decorative background. So I'm just laying down different pieces of lace to see which one I like the best. And I think I'm going to go with this cream one. It's kind of like a embroidered or netted kind of lace. It's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to use this part and I'm going to glue it down to the midsection just to give it some sort of design in the background. Now I'm just using tacky glue for this and I'm going all into my little triangle pieces covering it completely and then I'm going to lay down the fabric. Okay so I'm just going to pinch it nice and tight press that fabric down to the template and this will flatten out my folds. So what you're going to want to do is go back in and bend those folds again because as you're laying down your layers of fabric or paper and you're pinching your fan or your template down, you're flattening out those folds. So you're going to want to keep doing this throughout the process to keep those folds into place because we want those folds to be seen in the end. Okay, I've cut my teal trimming into pieces and each piece is a little arch and I just figured this will be easier to place around the curve of the fan. This is a layering process, so I'm going to lay this lace trimming down first before adding the paper flower trimming because I want this to be shown in front of the paper flower. So I'm just putting my pieces down right around the edge with a little bit of tacky glue. For the paper flower, I'm gonna have to pull the petals apart so that I can get it to curve around the fan the way that I want it to. So I'm just breaking down the petals into pieces and then I'll attach them to the fan with a little bit of tacky glue. Now you can create your own little petals by cutting out little paper hearts and you can kind of wrinkle up and crinkle up the hearts so that they're kind of wrinkly and crinkly and they ruffle around your fan. So if you don't have any of these paper flowers, just create your own. You can still get the same effect by cutting out little heart shapes and then just crinkling up the paper. Um, if you have those scissors that cut wavy edges, use those to trim them out. And then this will give kind of like the same effect. So once I got all my pieces on, I just want to press them down nice and firmly just to make sure that they're sticking really well. And I still want to add more to it. So I decided to cut out a little flower piece out of the lace and put that in the middle on the bottom. For embellishment. So I'm just going to add this piece to tie in that top trimming and bring it all together. So I'm going in to add my creases and my folds. They don't have to be so elaborate. You just want to make sure that you can tell and see that, okay, this fan has some folds in it. You don't have to, they don't have to be very crisp and sharp folds. It's probably not going to do that anyways if you're layering different papers and fabrics on it. So just go in and fold your creases so that you can see that there are some folds in the fan. Okay, I want to continue to add more embellishments. So I thought maybe using one of these nail decals will do the job. You can say I'm getting carried away at this point, but... I think it needs it and I really love the way the white ones look. This was really hard to decide. I have these silver ones that kind of look like metal and I thought as much as I love the way the white looks, I want this one to be a little different. I want it to look like it has like a metal, like an antique metal piece sitting in the middle. So I chose to go with a larger, the largest design on this sheet. And these look like little metal pieces. They're not, but they look like it. They look like little antique metal embellishments. So I'm going to use this. 
and I'm going to use a little bit of tacky glue to put this on. Now they have uh, sticky back sides to them, but to keep it more secure and you know, last over time, I need to add a little bit of glue as well. So if you're using nail decals and they are sticky, make sure to add some glue so that they don't fall off over time. And I'm just going to place this right in the middle. And then I could just either fold this back piece over or trim it off. But I just added a little bit of glue and folded it over. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to make some stick fans. And I'm using these fancy little cocktail sticks. They have a little design on the end, and that's going to be the handle. And I'm going to make four of these. Now I'm going to take my Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm just going to kind of stain the wood with a little bit of water on my brush and some of the Antique Wax, just to give it some color. Now you can use toothpicks and add little beads on the ends for handles or little metal tidbits or embellishments if you don't have these fancy little cocktail sticks. And you can also paint them any color you would like. For these ones, I'm not creating a template, but I am using the same scrap poster board or chipboard or cardstock, whatever you're using. And I'm just gonna kind of sketch out four different shapes that kind of look like antique shapes. So they're not gonna be perfect. I'm just sketching out different shapes that come to mind. Okay, so here are my four shapes. They're not perfect. They're not evenly cut. That's fine. I'll clean them up a little bit, but I'm gonna be adding embellishments and trimming, so you're not even gonna notice that. I have this book of really pretty different scrap book paper, and I'm gonna use some of this for the background of these little fans. So I'm just gonna pick through which ones I like and pick four different designs. I'm just gonna glue my little shapes onto the area that I want as my background. And I'm just using a little bit of tacky glue. Once all my pieces dry, I can trim off the excess paper. So here are what my shapes look like now that they're covered with the scrapbook paper. And you can use fabric for this as well. I just decided to go with paper since these pieces were pretty small. You can see they're not evenly cut. That's perfectly fine. Just cut some shapes. You don't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it at all. For embellishing, I'm gonna use some of these nail decals that I purchased off of Tamo. Now, I do get a lot of questions on where I find my supplies or how can I find this or that um, from some of you viewers or where I'm finding what I'm using. Tiny friends, I will be doing a supply and product video coming up really soon. So stay tuned for that because I'll be able to link you to some of these supplies that I'm using automatically with direct links. That is coming up soon. I have a huge order coming in and then I'll be able to share that with you all and you guys will be able to go directly to some of these products. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of tacky glue. If you're using nail decals again, make sure you wanna add a little bit of glue when attaching them. And I'm just gonna put them right in the middle. And I've chosen the largest pieces off of the sheets. Okay, so this is what they look like. Now, before I add any trimming and embellishments, I wanna seal them in really good. So I'm gonna use a Satin Varnish by DuraClear. This will coat and protect, it will seal in the decals, and it'll leave a nice little shine to them. And I wanna have a tiny little shine to them. So this is just gonna finish off that look. Okay, so while those are drying, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this Antique Gold by Folk Art to my handles. And there's two areas that I'm covering, so it kind of looks like 
either two gold beads or two gold bands. And then once that dries, I'll add a little bit of the antique gold rub and buff just to make it pop out a little more. The gold rub and buff on top of this antique metallic gold, it just makes it come out a little more, a little more metallic, gives it a little more shine and a little more of a gold look. Now that these are dry, I can add some trimming and I'm just adding little trimmed off bits of lace for the trimming with a little bit of tacky glue. So I'm just going right around the top and bottom edge or around all of the sides or all of the edges. I'm just going to vary it up and do different things with different pieces of lace trimmings and different types of lace trimmings. So right now I'm just adding this tiny little skinny piece. You're not limited to lace trimmings. You can use different types of threads and strings. You can use different type of papers for trimmings. So use what you have, play around and see what looks good to you and what you like. And for this one, I'm using a little tiny piece of an embroidered lace. And to finish them off, I've added some little rhinestones. I have little pearl stones. You can add any type of little embellishments you would like, glitter, little bows, little beads, whatever you have in your stash. If you wanna add more detail, go ahead and add those. And now I can add my sticks. I'm gonna cut my sticks down to about an inch and a half, but you want them to be anywhere from an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. Okay, I'm just using regular tacky glue for this. You can use Elmer School glue or any kind of white PVA glue you have. And I'm just placing the sticks right in the center of the back and just making some adjustments to make sure that the sticks are nice and straight. I'm just placing them about a quarter of an inch on the back. So you don't want to go past a half of an inch. I would stay in between a quarter to a half of an inch on the back. Here is the image that inspired this idea, Tony friends. I found this image on my Pinterest board and I thought, oh my gosh, I love this so much. I need to create it and share it. So I did create a hand display stand as well. And I created this out of polymer clay. I did not show it because it would have been a whole video on its own. Now I did try using air dry clay, but the clay was drying faster than I could work. So I had to go to my polymer clay. And then for the paint, I used a sponge to give it some texture so it could look like some sort of plaster sculpture. Now the fans can sit in there pretty snug without any glue or tacky wax, whether I'm sitting the fan straight up or putting it in an, at a little bit of an angle. And I can switch out the fans to any one that doesn't have a handle on it. The floral image is just a rub on. And then I used a little bit of paint for the detail. For the stick fans, I decided to use this vintage vase that actually came from the 1960s Petite Princess collection. And I had it in my stash. And I thought this would be a really great way to use this. So it worked out perfectly. For the backing, I used some of the brown craft paper. You can use paper bag. You can use any type of thin paper and just cover up the backs. I chose to go with the same technique I use for my picture and photo frames and my mirrors. But you definitely just want to use a thin piece of paper for that. You could use a very thin piece of fabric for the backing as long as it's pretty solid and not see-through. To create the closed fan, I took two of those pizza-shaped slices that we created earlier, cut them in half, and created four smaller ones glued them together and added a couple beads and a chain. And then I added a paper back to it. I also used a gold shimmery ribbon for the pattern on this one. 
I used the same thing on this and then I took some of that red fabric and just ruffled it around the edges and painted a gold trimming around that. So that completes today's video, tiny friends. I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and hit that like button. And let me know what you thought in the comments below and tell me which ones were your favorite fans. As always, I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you everyone for all your support. It means the most to me and helping my channel to grow. If you're new today and just viewing my channel for the first time and you like what you see and would like to see more of my miniature creations, please hit that subscription button and don't forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. Stay tuned to find out which one of our tiny friends I created this lovely set for. And until next time, you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.